Hey everybody, welcome to uh, Sculpting Hands Part 2, or in this case kind of a Part 1 again, because I'm going to uh, go over exactly how I sculpt hands. And for this one, it's going to be uh, about how to sculpt a fist, which is probably the most common uh, way you'll end up sculpting a hand, uh, especially if you're a beginner. So I'm um, trying out a new camera angle. Hopefully it's uh, easy enough for everybody to see what's going on and uh, should be easier for me to see what I'm doing so I can actually sculpt better um, during the videos. All right, so in this first step here, I'm work gonna be working on this arm here. This is just a quick dummy armature I made. There's no legs or anything, so don't worry about it. There's nothing special going on. I just needed something that would have two spare arms that I could be sculpting on. So. Uh, I actually accidentally started part of this hand already. So what you do when you have an arm here, the first thing you wanna do if you have a fist is to flatten out the wire. And the way I do that is if you have a uh, more substantial flat pair of pliers, you can just pinch the wire right near the uh, innermost pivot point there. You just pinch it really hard. Sometimes you have to start out towards the end and work your way in. But once you do that a couple times, it becomes very flat, as you can kind of see from this angle. And what that allows you to do, it allows you to do a couple things. Um, if you wanted to wear it wrapped around a weapon, you could, you know, it's it's flatter now. It'll take up less space, but have more, oops, have more surface area on the weapon, so that's good. But in our case, we're just gonna, once we do that, we're just gonna bend it around to kind of make a bit more of a uh, fist shape this will give us a little bit more um, area for the oops, for the hand to go on when we apply the putty. Put that arm back where it is. As you can see now, it's just bent over in a little loop. Um, it's not 100% necessary, but like I said, the main reason is it just helps uh, create a better catch for the putty when you're gonna. All right, so I know I've talked a lot about um, how I like to use Fimo, but it's sometimes I like to use putty when I sculpt. And um, I've been trying, I've done a lot of hands recently since I decided to do this series. And I've been going back and forth on which way I prefer. And uh, while I think it would be nice to be able to do everything in Fimo, um, just the way I've been working, what is, what's come out is that I, I, it's just a little more versatile to sculpt the hands um, in putty. Um, especially if you're if you're if you're doing um, the hand holding something, um, I've started to to use the putty more because you don't have to have that initial thin layer of green stuff and then the layer of femo and then you have to sculpt the femo. You can just basically start sculpting right away, and um, that cr tends to create a much better hold. So, anyways, all that said, because. I am going to go ahead and uh, use putty for this demo. So I'll show you what I use. I use Procreate when I'm sculpting with putty. So it's, sorry about that, had an alarm go off and stop my recording. Anyways, so 50-50 Procreate, gray and white, and then about 25% of the Fimo. And that gives it a nice, uh, it's, still, it's still putty, but it cuts the gumminess of it quite a bit. Um, also extends the working life a little bit, which I much prefer. So I'm going to mix this up and then we'll be back in a second. First thing you do is just get a little bit of putty and I like to just start it on the palm side just to get a little bit on there. Use the four, tool, four tools I'm going to be using. Color shaper, um, X-Acto knife or scalpel in this case. Uh, and then this pin, I'll, I might use this tool, probably not, I'm probably mostly going to use this, but I always keep it out because it is my, my main sculpting tool. So you're not trying to uh, totally get the shape of the hand, just start to get a little bit of the bulk down here. So there's some more putty and area to work with. So I put a little bit there and then on the back side I grab a larger piece and this is where I start to sort of uh, try and create the 
back of the hand and the fingers. So don't worry if you don't grab too much. You can always add it later. So try and blend it in so you don't have this big gaping seam from the two pieces. <coughs> Excuse me. Now the reason I'm showing it to you this way specifically to do the two parts is because a lot of times when you're building this up and working on an actual uh, miniature, there's a good chance that some of this has been built up more than what I've, what I've showed you already, um, especially if it's holding a weapon. And so this is basically a key part is this back. You put the back on, you wrap around <clears throat> some fingers as well. So now, if you study the anatomy of the hand, we know this is a little bit wrong right now because basically you have this larger fleshy part, well, muscly part for the thumb there. So we have to knock this part down back a little bit. Just leave that meatier part where the thumb will go. <clears throat> so basically what I'm doing here, I'm sculpting this part and this part, not the thumb, and putting on some putty for the back of the hand and the fingers. I always add the thumb at the very end. <laughs> If you want, if you feel comfortable that this, you can put a big ball there, start shaping it, and uh, you know cut in everything, including the thumb. But I like to wait and do an extra piece just because it's such a, it just it's such a different part of the hand. It doesn't really flow with everything else. It's you know moves much more, and um, so I, I I just feel that if you wait till the end, do it separate, then it is a uh, it helps make that more of a defined shape. Right, I'm going to smooth this down to the arm a bit. So another thing you'll notice about hands, there's kind of two ways to do a hand. There's the miniature way and then the more accurate way. Um, a lot of times when people sculpt a hand and it looks very good in miniature, they basically make a box. But if you look at your hand, I mean it's box shaped, but especially with the fingers, you see that it's you know, smaller here, it kind of expands, and then dips down just a little bit here. And on the back too, you know, there's a curve to it. It's not like a straight, perfect box. So I used to do more boxy hands and that totally works, you know, especially at this size, but you can really make things look more interesting if you try and keep that shape in mind that, you know, it kind of, curves slightly especially if you're figure if you're doing larger figures I'd really suggest um, studying hands and, and figuring out how to do that because it just looks so much more interesting like I said on this small scale it's you can still see it and it's it definitely looks nice but uh, you know you have to look much harder to find it so Okay. <clears throat> so now I've got the basic shape of the hand in there with the fingers. It's a good idea to check. This is where you might have to add some more putty. Um, check the fingers here. So let's see, I'm not sure how well it stands out, but um, right here, it's a bit of a gap where this index finger would be if it was making a fist. It's a little short, so I could add a bit of putty, or I could just try and push it a little bit here to make the to get some putty from the uh, other part of the hand. Also, since this is a uh, this will have the thumb added, I don't have to worry about adding more because the thumb will cover it like that. <clears throat> so I'm actually going to try and push this a little bit more. 
um, to do what I was just showing here. Just so, I mean, a, a total closed fist, you know, does square up a bit more, but I kind of find it fun and interesting to like do more of the rounded shape like this. So I'm going to put it in the time lapse and um, get that part done. Then I'll be back when the, uh, when I'm going to put the thumb on. All right, we're back, and I'm, uh, I've zoomed in a little bit. Hopefully you can see what's going on a little bit better. Okay, so I've got the basic shape down. It's very important to get down because uh, once you start cutting in these details, it's much harder to uh, kind of capture that shape you're going for. So, but um, as you can see, this pad here kind of that I was sculpting, it's not really built up quite as much as it should be. Not a huge deal, but uh, especially because we can just add putty now. So, uh, but first I'm going to go ahead and throw the thumb on there. So just grab a little sausage of putty and I start it where the knuckle would be there and start to blend it in. So this is another reason some people might like to try doing this as one whole blob of putty and pushing it around. There's challenges for both. So, you know, if you do it this way, you have to blend it in. Um, you have to get rid of the seam as it touches and sometimes that can you know, mess with what you've done earlier. Um, but obviously, like I said, the benefit is it's much easier to uh, define where this shape is, so the thumb in this case, because you're adding on exactly where it needs to go and, and what it is. So um, in the other way, you know, you have to you know work at it a little bit more, but you don't have to worry about blending. So this is just the way I like to do it. So as you can see, I grab my baby spatula. Sometimes when I'm working with the fine parts, it is more comforting to have a, a smaller tool so you just put this on, wrap it around a little bit. Now what's gonna happen is the thumb will typically roll and that's not how our thumb works. So it's a good idea to come back to the top and kind of just like pat in, pat it a little bit, pat it so that you get um, some more of that form back. And again, as I said, like there's not as much there as there should be. So we just grab a little bit of putty and add it in there. That's another reason I like to add a bit of uh, clay to this is that it tends to blend together. It's, it's still definitely sculpting with putty, but um, it does get a decent amount of the clay properties. Hopefully I'm hope holding this in good place for everybody. I'm trying a new, slightly different camera setup so that I can see better and hopefully you guys can all still see what's going on. But I'm still getting used to it. I'm not entirely sure if it's the best solution. So let me know what you guys think.
And it's a good idea to check your hand several times just to make sure you're doing it right. You should do that anytime you're not sure about the thing you're sculpting. If it looks off, you know, don't don't keep fighting it or playing with it, you know. Take a look. And it's very easy with hands because they're pretty much right in front of your face when you're working. So Okay, so that's pretty good. Oops. Okay, so now that you have that on there, it's time. Oh, I got it. I can't stop messing with this. <laughs> Okay, I'll stop. Okay, so we've got the fist, general shape. We have, well, let's see if I can get it to focus. We have the thumb on there. Now it's time to do the fingers. So you just take your scalpel. Let's zoom out just a little bit so I think it's having trouble focusing. There we go. And obviously there's four fingers, three gaps between them. So we're gonna put three lines. I usually start with the index finger, and the reason why is um, this is you know going to be one of your larger fingers, at least compared to the pinky. So you basically, and this might take you some time to, to kind of get a sense of, depending on how well you are about gauging spacing, but you put a little line, just and, and do it very lightly. Don't push in very far, because if you do have to adjust, you still can. And then try and do a similar size one for the middle finger and then the ring finger, and basically you'll end up with uh, them all being roughly the same. Obviously the ring finger and the middle finger should be a little bit thinner, if anything is going to be thinner. And the, anyways, the reason why I uh, pick the size based on starting with the index finger is because uh, when we get to the pinky, if for some reason you misgaged it, like, you know, or your finger's looking too large, um, if you would have spaced it evenly. Basically what you can do is you can trim off a little bit from the pinky because our hand does stick out a little bit from this side, but as you can see, the uh, finger itself actually comes in quite a bit into the hand. Um, so the palm stays rather large. So you can make up some of that space and end up making it look uh, much more accurate in the process. So. So once that's once we get that laid in, we just pop in these lines a little bit more. <clears throat> Around the hand on this side. Let's see if I can make sure there's enough light here. Also notice I'm trying to kind of give the fingers that converging quality that you see, like not trying to keep them perfectly straight, you know, letting it bend in there. Oops. So just to explain in case people aren't realizing it, you've got your top digit here your front digit here, and then your last digit, when you have a totally closed fist, you really can't see them. They are wrapped up into the palm. So you don't have to worry about that so much. You can put a little bit of a line there if you really want to, but um, the thumb covers up at least two of the fingers. Now you do want to have it defined a little bit on the pinky side, obviously, because it is exposed on the side. So you can put a little line in there. Okay. All right, so you know, you at this point you could be done, but we're gonna push it even farther. So this is where, ow, ooh, I just stabbed myself. <laughs> uh, too much, uh, too many things encroaching on my sculpting area here, but that's okay. Okay, um, you take the needle, and 
so when we put in these little cuts for the fingers with the um, blade, it's a very straight, uninteresting line. But the fingers, you know, they're curved and they roll in. So if you get a little needle or probe, this is just a uh, tool I made myself. It's a made from a uh, shirt needle, like a dress shirt. Pulled it out, mounted it to a little brass rod. Anyways, you take this and you're basically going to lay it down sideways into the finger just as you did with the uh, scalpel. And I always start uh, with the needle going in, but kind of pulling towards the knuckle. And the reason for that is, is that you, uh, you also start to define the knuckle. So just gently push in. And it kind of, and this is a kind of another um, good thing about using putty for hands is that putty tends to like to stay round as you're pushing like it, it it'll pull but it'll leave you know part of it where it was so it kind of makes a more natural look in a lot of ways we do it here now when you do that, it starts to splay the hands a little bit. If it gets going too crazy, we can always tap them back in. After I do that, I do like to um, take my color shaper and kind of gently push the fingers down a little bit to kind of create this shape from the knuckle where this is raised. And this dips just a touch. It just starts to reinforce that some. Let's get that on camera. But it's a very, very light touch, and a lot of times I'll uh, go back in. That. Okay. Kind of the last touch with using this probe here is to, so we've, you know, kind of pressed in there to make that rounded shape but now we actually more poke into the rather than being you know parallel with it we go a little more perpendicular to the fist and we press it in oops gotta be very careful with this part Let's see, sometimes you have to go back in with your clay shaper just to gently round it some, so, okay. You can also press a little bit on top. Now this, you need to make sure you don't kind of cut in. You wanna make it very gentle because you're just suggesting the shape of the knuckles here. And then on the side, as I said, they, um, the other hand, the finger is exposed here. So Oops, I'm going to put one more little cut in here to be the tip of the finger. Here. And then we can just put in a couple of knives on camera, okay? Just a couple little lines there just to suggest that the finger is bending around. Okay, I'm gonna do a little more cleanup on this hand um, on time lapse to finish it off. See you in a second.
And there we go. All finished. You have a nice sculpted fist. All right, guys. Um, hope this new setup worked for you. Um, let me know what you thought of the video or, you know, any suggestions about my setup. I think I still, I still have to work on the lighting because I was getting a little bit of shadow as I was sculpting. So I'll try and work on that. But hope you enjoyed. And, uh, oh, so um, next video won't be the final hand tutorial. I um, have got some other cool things that I've been working on that I want to share next time. But uh, after that, we'll finish up hands. So stay tuned for that. All right, thanks for watching.